This past Saturday at No Mercy, the war of all wars to see who held dominion on Friday Night SmackDown commenced. The Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre, head to head with the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Of course, the big gold belt, the World Heavyweight Championship that Drew McIntyre has been obsessed with winning back hanged in the balance. McIntyre was aggressive from bell to bell, looking to capitalize on a weakened Cody Rhodes, especially after the ambush just last week on SmackDown. Cody Rhodes was forced to dig down deep and withstand some punishment that McIntyre was stowed upon him. McIntyre came within inches of becoming the World Heavyweight Champion, but on the back half of the matchup, it was Cody Rhodes who rose to the occasion, delivering not one, not two, but three crossroads, ultimately retaining his World Heavyweight Championship. But we want to take you back to a couple of weeks ago right here on SmackDown. McIntyre with a huge victory over an old pal, the Celtic warrior Sheamus. And Drew was out to send a message after that matchup, a beatdown on Sheamus. Eventually, Cody Rhodes would make the save. Well, earlier today, Sheamus went to management and actually threw out a challenge to Cody Rhodes. And that leads us to this matchup right here tonight. From what we understand, the Celtic Warrior said he appreciates what Cody did, did for him, excuse us, a few weeks ago, coming to his aid. But the Celtic Warrior needs to prove that he still has an edge, that he still has what it takes to hang with the best of them. Sheamus will lock horns with the world champ, Cody Rhodes, right here tonight in Buffalo on SmackDown. And we kick things off tonight. Live from the Key Bank Center with the master of the 619, Ray Mysterio. Sheamus out to prove he still has what it takes to hang with the best of them in your main event. But our opening bout, all about retribution for one Latino award holder representative. There is a very good chance Rey Mysterio would be standing here today as one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions had it not been for Andrade really taking Santos Escobar out of the equation a few weeks ago at WWE Live. Rey Mysterio out to get some retribution on behalf of his now fallen LWO brother. Well, as we kick things off tonight on Friday Night SmackDown, we are nearing our Thursday premiere. SmackDown is on the move. It all kicks off Thursday, live October the 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Do not miss the season premiere of Thursday Night SmackDown. Well, we are kicking things off tonight as Andrade is set for battle against Rey Mysterio. And Andrade has certainly been pivotal in the WWE Tag Team titles, no longer being housed by the Latino World Order. He is accompanied tonight by the current champions, Angel and Birdo, the men he aided in winning those Tag Team titles back in the month of August at Saturday night's main event. Well, of course, the LWO eventually regained number one contendership, and as they were set for battle just mere weeks later with Angel and Birdo, Andrade really was a difference maker, ambushing Santos Escobar over on TikTok on Velocity with a steel chair attacking the ribcage. Escobar went on the fight nonetheless, and we saw how that went just a few weeks ago. Angel and Birdo, of course, taking down Ray and Escobar once more to retain the tag team titles. Well, Santos Escobar going to be out until further notice with those damaged rib cages by El Idolo Andrade. But now Rey Mysterio walks into battle tonight, hoping to do one good by the Emperor of Lucha Libre. We'll take the personal vendetta out of it. This is two Lucha Libre stars set to lock horns right here on SmackDown. And we should expect nothing but greatness as we get set to kick things off. Once again, we're thank you for joining us. We are live from the Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York, just 24 hours away from the Queen of the Ring in Madison Square Garden. 
So much to talk about regarding that event later this evening, but Andrade kicking the match off hot with one Rey Mysterio. These two men know each other tremendously well, have had several battles in the past, and Alidolo starting out hot and heavy off the springboard. Ever since Andrade returned to the WWE back in the spring, he initially said he wanted to team up with Rey Mysterio, was trying to lure Rey away from the LWO. Rey, of course, did not take the bait, which really led to the issues between Andrade and especially Santos Escobar. And you gotta imagine is one of the reasons why Andrade chose to align himself with Angel Lombardo. Of course, their pursuit of the tag team championships really worked out in their favor, taking down the LWO the first go around, as well as the second. But Mysterio, innovative offense that time. Sliding out of the ring right to the rib cage of Andrade. Hell, eye for an eye, rib for a rib. Santos Escobar watching from home has got to be grinning from ear to ear. Rey Mysterio, definitely gutsy coming out here alone tonight. Could have been accompanied by Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde. But Mysterio looking to do things alone as he has done many a times throughout his career. And you don't call him the biggest little man for nothing. May not be the biggest dog in the fight, but Rey has always had the most heart. Andrade not interested. And any fancy catchphrase or nickname that Rey Mysterio may house, Andrade is looking for one thing, to neutralize the LWO and put them on the back burner once and for all. Gotta imagine if Rey Mysterio can pick up this victory tonight. He is gonna be eyeing up the two gentlemen at ringside once again in Angel and Birdo. Maybe another opportunity for the LWO with his tag team titles could be nearing. Always on the shoulders of the master of the 619. We see Humberto right there exposing that one corner. I don't think Rey Mysterio has caught it just yet, but Rey needs to avoid it. An exposed turnbuckle. One of the things that added in the Angel Humberto taking down Rey and Escobar back at Saturday night's main event in August. Rey Mysterio, however, not looking to find himself in a disastrous position once again tonight. Scale on the ropes. Here comes Rey. Could have been going for a Frankensteiner, but he got caught with a powerbomb. Andrade into the cover, off the reversal there, but Mysterio still got something left. As we mentioned at the top of the bell, take out, oh wait a minute, hold that thought there, hold that thought, Andrade taking advantage of the exposed steal. Mysterio, however, dishing it right back. All's fair in love and war. And now look at Ray. Climbing the ropes, doing what he does best. That exposed buckle, followed by some outside interference from Andrade, what aided the LWO in losing the tag team titles. Mysterio off the destroyer, but Charles Robinson's back is turned. Thanks a lot for that exposed corner. Mysterio now into the cover, and that might have been all she wrote had the man in the zebra stripes not had his back turned. The numbers game of Andrade, Angel, and Birdo working against the master of the 619 here tonight. Look at Ray here going for the seated moonsault. Nobody to be found off the delivery. Andrade starting to come unglued. Couple of strikes, nothing fancy, and Rey Mysterio all of a sudden is looking up at the lights of the Key Bank Center. Just gonna wear down. The man in the mask. Oh, now a nice reversal by Ray. Trying to catch him slipping that time. Damn near almost had him. Andrade popped the shoulder up at 2.9. As we were about to say a few moments ago, you take the personal vendetta out of this thing. You got Andrade and Rey Mysterio inside of that squared circle. Two phenomenal talents. Any given week, these audiences are going to be lying up down the block to see these two men go at it. But tonight, there is just an added salt into this recipe as Rey Mysterio was looking for retribution. Oh no, backslide by Andrade. I think he went for that spinning back elbow. Didn't get all of it, but damn near almost caught Rey with the three count. Fast pace action here in your opening bout on one of the final Friday Night Smackdowns before our move to Thursdays. 
Oh, Ray can't afford this. Cannot allow a distraction for the tag team champions to take his eye off the ball. Andrade from behind, using his size and strength to his advantage. And he almost had him. Rey Mysterio going to keep on fighting. He saw what it took to keep down Rey back at Saturday Night's main event in August. It was not an easy task, even with the outside interference, for Angel Umberto. Rey Mysterio looking to get back at Andrade for the injury to Santos Escobar tonight. And I'm sure is keeping those tag team titles on his horizons as well. And Rey once again getting the shoulder up. Andrade had to believe that was it. Rey Mysterio, although certainly doesn't look like it, is finding a way to survive in this matchup. Hold on. Another kick to the gut. Double Destroyer making a dose. And this time Charles Robinson is right there. Eyes on the game. Unfortunately, Rey is not calling for it. Rey was looking to call ball game. Andrade gets the shoulder up once more. Well, at least Charles Robinson was in a prime position to count the three if one were to be had. Nonetheless, Rey Mysterio. We're gonna talk about keeping your eyes on the game. Mysterio not looking to let up. Andrade can try to crawl away, but Mysterio will close the gap by any means necessary. Oh, but again, Mysterio's not gonna get the victory tonight if Angel and Birdo are taking his eye off the ball. All right, might have goaded Andrade in. Maybe he wasn't so locked into the distraction. Either way, you spin it. Rey Mysterio is in control. Andrade has got to find a will, has got to find a way, because if he doesn't, Rey Mysterio may be on the coast of victory. Springboard, Moon Salt delivers. Andrade, look it up, at the lights, but a three count not to be had. Another springboard. Mysterio keeping his foot on the gas pedal, heading to the top, he's feeling froggy! One more time into the pitfall. And that time is the charm. A huge victory for Rey Mysterio tonight as we kick things off from Buffalo, New York. Payback was on the mind of Rey, doing one good by Santos Escobar. But what does this mean for the LWO and their pursuit of the WWE Tag Team titles? All remains to be seen here on SmackDown. Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic? Earlier this afternoon, Tyler Bate took to Instagram and had this to say, being the Cruiserweight Champion comes with great pride and responsibility. With the Cruiserweight Classic approaching, I feel it is my duty to give every man in that tournament an opportunity, which is why I intend to defend my title through each and any round I participate in during the CWC. The stakes have been raised, boys. See you all in Manhattan, New York. The big strong boy, the cruiserweight champion, Tyler Bate, 
promises to put his title on the line each and every time he participates throughout the tournament. More information on the Cruiserweight Classic still to be revealed, but what a tournament it is shaping up to be. Tyler Bate will be involved in the 16-man field. Well, the Cruiserweight Classic kicks off one week from Sunday, September the 29th, live at 12 noon Eastern from Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York. Well, we are back here in Buffalo, New York at a sold out Key Bank Center. And Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford, the Street Profits, are itching for action. Well, Bobby Lashley unfortunately falling short to Randy Orton this past Saturday, but Dawkins and Ford looking to keep their momentum from a six-man tag team victory a few weeks ago on track. They threw out an open challenge earlier today. The question is who from the SmackDown locker room is going to accept a little bit of duos action as we roll forward here on SmackDown. Wait a minute. What are they doing here? Well, this could not have been what Dawkins and Ford were expecting. And their opponents at a combined weight of 472 pounds, Stoney D'Angelo and Channing Lorenzo, the D'Angelo family. Well, for those unfamiliar, we have a former set of NXT Tag Team Champions in the house here on SmackDown. That's the dawn of NXT, Tony D'Angelo, alongside Channing Lorenzo, AKA Stax. The D'Angelo family is evidently accepting the Street Profits Open Challenge. But what are they even doing here in Buffalo, New York? Well, I guess it's a rhetorical question. It's very obvious what they're doing out here. The D'Angelo family has arrived on SmackDown unbeknownst to us all and have accepted the open challenge of Dawkins and Ford of the Street Profits. Well, here we go. Unexpected action, but certainly welcome nonetheless as Tony D'Angelo, the Don of NXT, or maybe we should be calling him the Don of SmackDown, is getting it handed to him by Ford in the early moments. Well, this is certainly a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one as Montez Ford going after Tony D in the early moments of this matchup. Well, the Street Profits have been hungry for competition and certainly hungry to rise the ranks, I should say raise the ranks here on SmackDown to get their opportunity at the WWE Tag Team titles again. They moved one step closer a few weeks ago and that six-man tag team victory Alongside the almighty Bobby Lashley against Austin Theory, Grayson Waller, and the Apex Predator, Randy Orton. As we mentioned, Lashley falling short to Orton in one-on-one -on -one action this past Saturday at no mercy, but Dawkins and Ford looking to keep their momentum strong. They're going to have to think on their feet tonight as Tony D is all over Ford. Certainly a surprise as we mentioned, and now the Street Profits find themselves in a situation where they got to try to think on their feet put together a game plan that is going to lead them to victory. Oh, wait a minute. Montez Ford using his longer limbs to his advantage, almost muscled down Tony D'Angelo that time. Three count not to be had just yet. And we were talking about just a few moments ago, the LWO and their possible approach to getting another tag team championship matchup as Rey Mysterio defeating Andrade. Kicking us off here on SmackDown. But what about the rest of the SmackDown tag team division? You got the Street Profits hungry for opportunity. And now you got the D'Angelo family looking to insert themselves into the blue brand with emphatic force. Certainly going to be easier said than done against the Street Profits who have held championships all across the WWE in their day. Tony D'Angelo muscling down Montez Ford. A very physical matter that time. Tony D has been known as the Don of NXT. These two men get a victory tonight. We may be calling him the Don of SmackDown as there is a tag made to his right-hand man, Channing Lorenzo, a.k.a. Stax. These two guys are former NXT Tag Team Champions. A mafia-like boss is Tony D'Angelo. Certainly not afraid to get his and his family's hands dirty doing what they got to do. 
Just running through the Street Profits tonight. Is the hit that they got to take care of. Then so be it. On the shoulders of Stax. Down goes Montez Ford. And there's a shoulder up by Ford. So much action still to come here on Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, the American Nightmare, the World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes, set the battle. The Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. Also with the Queen of the Ring looming tomorrow night in Madison Square Garden. The women's division is on edge. The number one contender for the Women's World Championship, Selena Vega, is in the house. After that attack from the prodigy Roxanne Perez last week, she'll be out here just a bit here in Buffalo, New York. Oh, you know, talk about not afraid getting your hands dirty. Well, there's Montez Ford taking care of Tony D. And a much needed tag to the big AD, Angelo Dawkins. Montez Ford wrestling this matchup since the opening bell. Now time for some fresh legs. The heavy hitter of the Street Profits, that being Angelo Dawkins. This stack's creating a little bit of distance. He might need a much needed tag after taking some great offense by a former pair of tag team champions. It was just a few months ago when the Street Profits were challenging for the WWE tag team titles right here in the blue brand. They would love to get back to that spot. But if Stax keeps it up, unloading, like Angelo Dawkins owes him some lunch money, Tony D'Angelo as well as Stax might be stopping the Street Profits dead in their tracks. AD looking up at the lights. Not where he thought he was going to be upon the Street Profits trip to Buffalo, New York. Inside Cradle almost caught, caught stacks that time. Tony D reaching out. He can reach all he wants. I'm not Sir Channing Lorenzo knows where he's at. Might need to put some fresh mozzarella by his nose. Wake him up a little bit. AD exploder into the corner. Now we're getting physical. And will that be all she wrote? Not just yet. Great offense by the Street Profits nonetheless as Angelo Dawkins continues to fight, continues to muscle the smaller competitor. This is where AD continues to have his advantage over his opponents. Nothing Stax can do at the moment. Damn near almost fascinating to watch. Angelo Dawkins just going to work on one half of the D'Angelo family. Max screen some distance that time. And here we go, breaking things down into a Brooklyn brawl, yet we're here in Buffalo. Doing what they gotta do, all in the name of their family. Tag made to the Don, Tony D taking care of Angelo Dawkins and a cheap shot on Montez Ford. How you doing, Buffalo, New York? Angelo Dawkins might be rocked off that fall from the apron to the floor, right here in the Key Bank Center. Tony D'Angelo, no small competitor, got some weight to him as well, and putting it to use. These are two physical men going at it in the middle of a SmackDown ring. Any given Friday, and soon to be any given Thursday, a chance for somebody to either turn their momentum around or rev up the momentum they already have. That is what these two, these two teams are looking to do tonight. Take the next step upon the D'Angelo family SmackDown arrival, unbeknownst to us all. Once again exploding out of the corner. They know what they got to do. They know what it's like to get it done. And tag team action. They have held gold in the black and gold brand before. And now looking to find success for themselves here on SmackDown. Angelo Dawkins, my goodness, in Seguri. Somebody check on Tony D. The lights are on, but I don't know if anybody's home. Montez Ford now looking to bring some fast-paced offense to this contest. Tony D creating a little distance. Does not want to find himself in enemy territory. Muscles down the ever-explosive Montez Ford. Tony D'Angelo thought he might have been rocked off that Inseguri. The credit where it's due, able to shake the cobwebs off, and now is starting to rev up his own engines against Tez. Tony D back and forth with Montez Ford here on SmackDown. Springboard! 
tilt the world tornado DDT. Chad Patton right there, but Tony D'Angelo not going to allow the confidence boost that can come with a pinfall. Ford goes back to the well. Ella worked the first time. Why not add some salt in the wounds and do it again? I'll tell you, a surprising bout on hand here on SmackDown. Nothing we were expecting, but it's been an exciting one nonetheless. Nice float over that time. And you got to give credit where credit is due. Tony D'Angelo has fought through some hard-hitting offense by Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins thus far. Ford breaking things up, not allowing a three count to be made, and the big AD is showing signs of wear. Tony D certainly impressed with his own actions, soaking in the pageantry of this Friday night SmackDown capacity audience. Angelo Dawkins has got to find a window of opportunity, and he's got to find it now. The Angelo corner is not where he wants to be. Tony D, couple of elbows, stiff as all how. Oh man! I don't know if slapping the Don is a way to get in good with the family. Tony D'Angelo not taking kindly to that disrespect. Angelo Dawkins looking dazed, going for an amusement park ride in the middle of Buffalo, New York. This one's over. The D'Angelo family with an emphatic victory upon their SmackDown debut. Well, Dawkins and Ford throwing out the open challenge and what seems to be SmackDown's newest tag team accepting taking the bait and making the most of it. Tony D with a win. This Buffalo, New York audience may not be pleased, but the D'Angelo family has arrived. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Saturday night, October the 12th. Saturday night, October the 26th. Witness the exclusive Halloween Havoc events. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Become a No Nation Gaming channel member today and don't miss out on Halloween Havoc. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way exclusively each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. We're back live inside the Key Bank Center here in Buffalo, New York. The cold and dangerous Blair Davenport set for action against the number one contender to the Women's World Championship tomorrow night at Queen of the Ring. The first lady of the LWO, Zelina Vega, certainly with a busy 24 hours in her pursuit of championship gold. Zelina Vega! 
We want to take you back to last week on SmackDown. Cameras cut into the top of the stage in the midst of our main event as the women's world champion, Roxanne Perez, wiping out Selena Vega. A brawl that started in the backstage area that ended in a Pop Rocks on the steel. Zelina Vega obviously banged up from that attack, but here to fight nonetheless. And you notice Raquel Rodriguez accompanying Zelina Vega down the ringside tonight. You caught briefly the women's world champion Roxanne Perez looming out here as well. Certainly some bad intentions surrounding the squared circle as Blair Davenport setting to make some new paths for herself here on SmackDown. Just last week, Blair came up short in the quarterfinals. For the Queen of the Ring tournament against the goddess Alexa Bliss. Bliss will wrestle Raquel Rodriguez tomorrow night in Madison Square Garden. Semi-final matchup. The winners move on to tomorrow night's main event to compete for the 2024 King, or I should say Queen of the Ring crown. Of course, the winner will move on to Survivor Series in November. Challenge for their brand's women's championship. So much riding on the line tomorrow night. Blair Davenport looking to prove that a bump in the road will not slow her down in her pursuit of the top spot on SmackDown. All over Zelina Vega since the opening bell. Don't take your eyes off the number one contender. Vega earning her opportunity by pinning the shoulders of Roxanne Perez to the canvas in the midst of a tag team matchup last month here in the blue brand. Selena Vega's waited long and hard for her opportunity and tomorrow night in New York City is where it matters most. But tonight, looking to keep her momentum sky high over the top rope and down to the ground. Crash and burn as Blair Davenport finds herself down and out at ringside for a brief moment. Selena Vega in pursuit of victory tonight just as Roxanne Perez was. This past Wednesday, on Velocity, where she picked up a victory against Indy Hartwell. Now Vega looking to match Roxanne's energy on the road to Queen of the Ring tomorrow night. Back inside the ring, Blair Davenport all of a sudden is finding herself with her back against the wall. Not going to be denied just yet. The LWO's first lady, Selena Vega. May have some great momentum on her side as of late, but will it be enough to not only keep down Blair tonight, but hopefully sustain it in a matchup for the Women's World Championship tomorrow? A busy 24 hours, as we mentioned, for the number one contender. Blair Davenport, my goodness, not interested in Zelina Vega's pursuit of the championship, only interested in her own growth on SmackDown. And there you see Roxanne Perez trying to expose the far turnbuckle, but Selena Vega looking to get this thing done in hopes that that exposed steel will not smell disaster. Anything you gotta do to get victory. Blair Davenport, all kinds of tied up. Selena Vega's got one thing in mind, and that's getting her hand raised on the other side of the bell. Selena picking up steam off the Irish whip. Both women going down. Hard hitting matchup since the beginning. And oh, wait a minute here. Oh, hold on. Roxanne Perez and Raquel Rodriguez mouthing off from each side of the ring. They got to get the hell out of the ring. Referee John Cohn has tossed out the women's world champion. And Raquel Rodriguez isn't going to be far behind her. Well, those two women have got their own issues that have yet to be settled. Both getting sent back to the showers. We'll see them back in the ring tomorrow night. The momentary distraction might have cost Selena. Blair with the knee, but referee's back his turn thanks to the actions of Roxanne Perez. Blair Davenport getting caught in an Andrade situation from earlier tonight. Well, she can mouth off to John Cone all she wants. All she's doing is giving Selena some time for R&R. &R. Head scissors take down. Vega and Blair throwing live bombs at each other in this contest, all in the means of victory. Roxanne Perez and Raquel Rodriguez no longer welcome to the vicinity of the ring. Vega getting, getting it done on her own as of the moment. Going back to this sleeper hole that Blair Davenport does not want to see a tap out smell disaster. Oh no, Vega might have got caught. Inside out, she gets turned. That could do it. 
Almost a huge victory for Blair Davenport on SmackDown. Oh, there's Vega. Money got caught. Blair Davenport cradled up and pinned for a three count. Resilience by the LWO's first lady. Here is your winner, Zelina Vega. Zelina Vega finding a way to win tonight. But can she do the same tomorrow? Can she pin Roxanne Perez where it matters most in the middle of the Big Apple when the women's world title is on the line? After no mercy is shown, and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way, live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood! The season premiere of Thursday Night Smackdown goes down live on October the 3rd, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. What a night it is going to be in Brooklyn, New York. And we can confirm that Rey Mysterio is on his way back to a WWE Tag Team Championship opportunity. The question is, who will team up alongside Rey? Will it be Cruz Del Toro? Will it be Joaquin Wilde? We know Santos Escobar is out indefinitely, but the LWO gets Angel and Birdo for the Tag Team titles in two weeks' time at the season premiere. And we also know that on Thursday night, October the 3rd, for the first time in 12 months, the franchise, John Cena, returns to SmackDown. What a night it is gonna be in Brooklyn, New York at the season premiere. We want to take you back to just a few weeks ago here on Friday Night Smackdown. The big strong boy Tyler Bate one on one with the Irish ace JD McDonough for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. There has been looming issues between JD and Butch who as you saw made his way to ringside certainly casting some bad intentions over this Cruiserweight Championship matchup. Just as JD did to Butch a few weeks prior ruining the Irish Aces' opportunity at once again becoming the Cruiserweight Champion. A brawl ensuing throughout the WWE Universe was ended in this disastrously headbutt in Saito on the concrete floor. We can con confirm that coming up next week right here on the final Friday Night Smackdown, the Irish Ace JD McDonough set to go one-on-one -on -one with the Bruiserweight Butch and get this, it is Falls Count Anywhere next week on SmackDown. Be here live tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Eastern time as we emanate from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York City for the inaugural Queen of the Ring. From Monday Night Raw, there is animosity that has been brewing since the month of July. It is a six-woman tag team matchup. Piper Niven leads Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville into battle against Bailey, the man Becky Lynch, and a partner that'll be chosen by those two women tomorrow night. And speaking of tag team action, the women's tag team championships are on the line. Io Sky and Asuka have had the number of the champs for weeks here on SmackDown. Ken Baszler and Stark turn away their challenge in just 24 hours. 
Selena Vega, hot off the heels of victory just moments ago here on SmackDown. But can she keep it up? Can she pin Roxanne Perez where it matters most? In New York City with the Women's World Championship on the line. From Monday Night Raw, the WWE Women's title up for grabs and at anybody's ball game, triple threat matchup, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, the challengers, and what about the champion, the up and coming Cora Jade. And of course, it is the Queen of the Ring Tournament semi-finals from Monday Night Raw. Former WWE Women's Champion Liv Morgan goes head to head against the center of the universe, Tiffany Stratton. Those two women, no strangers to each other. Just as we could say about the SmackDown side of the field, Alexa Bliss, Raquel Rodriguez ran into each other in tag team action last month. Tomorrow night, it's one on one. Who is going to move on to the finals, to the main event, and who will be crowned the inaugural 2024 Queen of the Ring? We find out tomorrow night in Madison Square Garden. But tonight, it is the Key Bank Center in Buffalo, New York, and it is main event time on Friday Night SmackDown. Well, Sheamus stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Scottish Warrior Drew McIntyre a few weeks ago. A confrontation on social media between those two, I guess, sometimes friends, maybe more foes, if anything, now. Sheamus was out to knock some respect, knock some sense back into the Scottish Warrior. Obviously, as you saw at the top of the hour, that was not to be. McIntyre with a victory and a post-match beatdown that Sheamus went on to be the receiving end of. Cody Rhodes making the save on that night. Sheamus very appreciative, but one thing Sheamus may agree with Drew McIntyre on still is that Sheamus needs to prove he's still got what it takes to hang with the best of them, to be in the main event. And going one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion, certainly a way to find that out. Cody Rhodes went through the announce table from an ambush from Drew McIntyre seven nights ago here on SmackDown. 24 hours later, with his back against the wall, successfully defended his gold in Montreal at no mercy against that same Scottish warrior. Rhodes back into the line of fire tonight. I am sure respect is there, but respect goes out the window when the bell is sound and it's time to fight. And a deserving World Heavyweight Champion at that. No matter how many times we have seen this man get knocked down, he continues to rise to the occasion just as he did last Saturday in Montreal, Quebec. Cody, I am sure, has the utmost respect for his opponent tonight, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, somebody who has accomplished all there is to accomplish here in the WWE but still continues to fight on for the love of the game, for the hunger of prizes that Cody Rhodes currently houses. For all Sheamus knows, a victory tonight could put him at the front of the line to challenge for the championship up next. All remains to be seen. Sheamus looking to test himself, and what bigger way to do so than against the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes in the main event here on SmackDown. No pun intended, but this should be a banger as we kick things off and Cody Rhodes is hot out of the gate. Gotta wonder what condition Cody Rhodes is in tonight. I'm sure cannot be feeling 100%. If you saw SmackDown last week, you saw the beatdown that Drew McIntyre instituted in the final moments of that telecast. Just 24 hours later, Cody Rhodes was in the line of fire against Drew McIntyre at no mercy. 
Is able to survive the triple crossroad, of course, aiding him in victory, just as that Cody Cutter may do so again tonight. Only a one count that time, but Sheamus looking rocked. Cody Rhodes doing his best to keep Sheamus down in the early moments, but the Celtic Warrior did not come to Buffalo, New York, just to be a stepping stone in the American Nightmare's legacy. Great White himself, a former world champion in his own right. Look at a snap Cody in half with a trio of backbreakers. Sheamus saying, anything you can do, Cody, I can do better. You did that scoop of a slam a few moments ago. My backbreakers are a one-up. Oh, wait a minute. Now Cody's going behind. These guys are throwing some live bombs in the early moments for the breaker. And Sheamus getting the shoulder up. Desperation kick out. My goodness, Cody Rhodes not hesitating to go to the well with what works. Well, now Sheamus with Cody up against the ropes and sending him for an amusement park ride. That knee good enough to knock anybody out. Any day of the week, twice on Friday. Cody just trying to get to his feet, but I don't know if the champ knows where he's at. Sheamus sending him back inside the squared circle here tonight. What has been a very interesting night of action in Buffalo, New York. Cody Rhodes now closing the distance that Sheamus created. Now unloading on the Celtic Warrior in the corner. What a night it's been here in the Key Bank Center. Exciting action at the top of the hour. Rey Mysterio picking up a huge win over Andrade. Earning himself a tag team title opportunity in just a few weeks in Brooklyn. Nice Olympic slam by Cody. Sheamus gets the shoulder off. Also saw the debut. Surprise to us all of the D'Angelo family. Huge victory over the Street Profits. Selena Vega keeping her momentum alive on the road to Queen of the Ring tomorrow night. All the while, Cody and Sheamus are beating the daylights out of each other. Pedigree by the champion. Will that be all she wrote? Not just yet, Sheamus kicks out. Man, oh man, we have got a barn burner on our hands, live and in living color on SmackDown. Sheamus was trying to rev up the engines. Cody stopped him dead in his tracks. Massive pedigree, but the Celtic Warrior still alive and looking to keep on swinging. Nice leapfrog, tilt the world, around and around, the world champion goes. Oh no. Down he goes off the power slam. And Cody gets the shoulder up again. Sheamus with some powerful maneuvers to Cody Rhodes here tonight. Looking for it for a second time, but can't go to the well. Cody Rhodes been there, done that. Sheamus going to the outside, trying to create some distance off the reversal. But if this matchup has shown us anything, is that Cody is willing to close that gap. Crashing a burn, Sheamus goaded him in. A veteran move by the Celtic Warrior, outsmarting the World Heavyweight Champion. And now Cody on the shoulders of the Great White. White noise right at ringside. What a match as Sheamus now tossing Cody right to the announce table, trying to beat the brakes off the World Champion. All on the means of victory. Sheamus heading back inside the ring. He might be satisfied with the count out tonight. Kinda would hate to see it. Referees at a count of seven. Cody, I'll bite slowly getting back inside the ring. Or wait a minute. He's got Sheamus in his grasp. Count of nine, but that count's gonna be broken. Sheamus forcefully brought to the outside. Holy hell, what a suplex. Cody again, very slowly trying to get back inside the ring, but Sheamus not going to allow it. Cody might have did a number to Sheamus off that suplex, but he might have took out just as much from himself. 
Cody hustles in, trying to catch Sheamus off guard. Into the ropes he goes. The Celtic Warrior still got some springs on him. Could have been going for a bro kick that time. Cody had it scouted. Lefts and rights. The world champion showing why he deserves to hold the gold. Sheamus looked like he was going for the bro kick a few moments ago. Cody Rhodes did his homework and now is trying to play catch up. Got to imagine how much was taken out of Cody off that series of maneuvers at ringside. Sheamus struggling to get to his feet. Springboard making a dose. Nice crossbody. Saw that out of Cody on Saturday against Drew McIntyre. It benefited him greatly. Sheamus now in the corner that Cody just used as a weapon. Sheamus creates some distance. Goes for the hammer. Cody goes behind. Nice German reversal. Champ's not done. Suplex. Simple, effective, old school wrestling. And now going behind. Crossroads by the champion. And that's going to be a victory for one American Nightmare. One hell of a fight here on SmackDown as Cody Rhodes showing a sign of respect to the Celtic War. Oh, wow. Well, Sheamus obviously frustrated in the loss and not showing Cody Rhodes a mutual sign of respect. Well, that's a, a surprise to be sure, but Sheamus obviously, like we said, frustrated. What the hell? Drew McIntyre, Claymore kick out of nowhere. Cody's back was turned. That son of a bitch, Drew McIntyre, striking when Cody was least expecting. Second Claymore kick. The hell's he doing out here anyway? Lost fair and square at no mercy last Saturday in Montreal. Cody's back was turned, and this is what he gets for it. Ridiculous. Wait a minute. I know that symphony anywhere. It's Ilya Dragon off. The man dragon has arrived for the first time since SummerSlam and is making a beeline for the Scottish warrior. Ilya Dragon off. Coming to the American Nightmare save. Two men who have had each other's backs time and time again here on SmackDown. But we have not seen Dragunov since SummerSlam, since his war with Drew McIntyre, a night he was looking for revenge. Tonight may be an ounce of it. Drew McIntyre going after Cody Rhodes. Little did Drew know the Mad Dragon was flying high in the skies of Buffalo, New York. Chaos has erupted here in the closing moments of Friday Night SmackDown. McIntyre couldn't have been expecting this. Dragunov looking game, looking hell-bent on getting his pound of flesh against the man who has laid, left him laying time and time again. These two fighting up on the steel and LED ramp. Well, McIntyre looked like he was going for a Claymore kick. Dragunov had it scouted. Oh, H-bomb by Dragunov. The Mad Dragon has rose again. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Get cameras back down to ringside. Now Randy Orton's out here. The hell is going on? The Apex Predator, Randy Orton, ambushing the World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes, Why he was already down. Well, Ilya dragged it off and drew back entire and brought their way to the backstage area all the while or it just dropped Cody with an RKO. These two men are absolutely no strangers to each other. They have gone to war several times earlier this year. And it seems as if the demons of Cody Rhodes past are coming back to haunt him. Oh no. Orton going for an RKO. Cody still with some life left in him. RKO through the announce table. 
from one son of a bitch and Drew McIntyre to another and that cold-hearted apex predator Randy Orton something's gotta give Cody Rhodes has a target on his back and every superstar in the Smackdown locker room is trying to nail a bullseye